Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in San Antonio, Texas at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Mark Gerdish, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Gerdish, it is great to see you again. Thanks for being with me. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so we are at STS great meetings, presentations going on, and we're getting a lot of questions from patients for experts like you. One of the questions is right in your specialty in terms of enhanced recovery after surgery, ERAS, and it comes in from Joe, and he asks, I have been diagnosed with bicuspid aortic stenosis and will be undergoing surgical aortic valve replacement. Is it possible to have the ventilator tube removed prior to waking up in the ICU, as I would like to avoid this process if possible. Yeah, this is a really good question because I kind of feel the same way that he does, right? I think that given the opportunity, if everything is safe, if my, the mechanics of my ventilation are good, if I'm stable, can that tube come out in the operating room while I'm kind of still asleep and then I just come out to the floor or the unit uh, without that tube and have to wake up with it in my mouth. Um, and so we've worked hard on that. Uh, the first end of it being what I said first, which is safe. Can it be done safely? Do this, is there a reason that tube has to stay in? As it turns out, by uh, virtue of kind of a multimodal uh, effort to uh, decrease the trauma around surgery and decrease the discomfort, uh, we have achieved a very high rate of in operating room extubation. So right now for our program, it's 50%, but that includes also some very sick people who might be having their third time reoperation, multi-valve operation. But when we look at the folks who are a little bit more straightforward, we get closer to 70, 80% of those folks having the tube taken out in the operating room. So first for minimally invasive, minimally invasive patients, it's nearly 100%. For sternotomy patients, though, still we're pushing over 50% for a lot of the, for those categories of patients. So how did we achieve that? Um, folks know that we do rigid sternal fixation, so if you have to have a sternotomy, if the bone has to be split, then patients are comfortable and their breathing mechanics are immediately good. Uh, minimally invasive, same thing. We use special methods to address discomfort, and as a result, people are comfortable. Breathing mechanics are immediately good. Second question, is there any bleeding? They've just had heart surgery. So uh, we actually use a specialized type of chest tube. It's an active clearance chest tube. This is something that, as a program, we had to decide if we wanted to invest in because there's added expense there. So we did a year-long study to look at the impact of using those tubes. And what we found was that we had a statistically significant decrease. We were already very low transfusion rate. We lowered it even more. And what we realized, the reason was that in the operating room, we're so sure that we don't have bleeding that we we're, we're very unlikely to give any blood products. That translates then into, we know the patient's stable. So hemodynamically, they look good. Patient's comfortable. We know that there's not bleeding. Take the tube out. Well, Dr. Gerdish, as a patient who woke up in the intensive care unit with the ventilator tube still in, one, it was unexpected, and two, it was very uncomfortable. So I can't thank you for taking the time to answer Joe's question and investing in the people, the processes, and the technology at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.